SBS acknowledges the traditional custodians of country and their connections and continuous care for the skies, lands and waterways across Australia. You're listening to Australia Explained, an SBS audio podcast helping you navigate life in Australia. Every day, pedestrians across Australia break the law without knowing it. Often, this leads to penalties and, in some cases, accidents. If you're using any handheld device, which a police officer could say was distracting you while you're crossing the road, we'd like to see a $200 penalty. Welcome to Australia Explained. You are listening to your host, Afnan Malik. A pedestrian can cross any road, any time, with care, providing it's not within 20 metres of a pedestrian crossing. In this episode, we delve into how to stay safe and avoid unexpected fines and why it's important to familiarise yourself with some of Australia's common pedestrian laws. Pedestrian safety typically involves using common sense. However, NRMA's road safety expert Dimitra Valamatros says we cannot rely on this alone. Pedestrians are one of our most vulnerable road users, so it's really important that you're safe when you're walking anywhere or crossing the road. We know that those that are most vulnerable are our very young, so children, our very old, and also people who are intoxicated. Australia's pedestrians' laws may seem harsh to some, but they are in place to protect everyone who shares the streets and paths. James Williams, head of policy at the Royal Automobile Club of Victoria, says the legal definition of a pedestrian is surprisingly broad. Within Australia, pedestrians aren't just those people that are walking on foot on the pavement or down the street. It's in fact anyone pushing a bicycle or using a wheel device such as a skateboard, roller skates, rollerblades, wheelchairs, but also mobility scooters. So if you're in a mobility scooter on the pavement, you're considered under the law a pedestrian. The rules are guided by common principles across the states and territories with minor variations between jurisdictions. But Pedestrians across the country get caught out every day while simply crossing the road, as Ms. Volotomiros explains. Generally, how we keep safe around our roads is by crossing the road at an intersection where there's a traffic signal and always obeying the signal. So if there's a green man, walk when it's a green man. Don't start crossing the road when it's red. If the red man is on and you cross the road, you can be fined. This law applies across Australia. Crossing against a red light or up to 20 metres away from the lights is commonly referred to as jaywalking. Harold Scrubby, CEO and founder of the Pedestrian Council of Australia, says jaywalking is a borrowed term. There is no law in Australia called jaywalking. It's an American idea. But in Australia, the rule is very clear. A pedestrian can cross any road, any time, with care, providing it's not within 20 metres of a pedestrian crossing and providing it's not against a red flashing light or a red light at traffic lights. In New South Wales, you can even be fined if you start to cross on the flashing red light. When there's no traffic light, then look for a designated zebra crossing, a section of road painted with white stripes. Here, cars must give way to pedestrians. The crossing is sometimes raised to form what is affectionately called a wombat crossing, a zebra crossing painted onto a road hump. This regularly causes confusion due to its resemblance to a speed hump designed to reduce traffic speed. Ms. Vlahomitros says. Is that a speed hump or is that a place where I can cross? What we're finding is that sometimes councils are placing plants to help pedestrians know that this isn't a place to go. So looking at the footpath will give you an indication in terms of is the footpath leading you that way? Is there a sign there where there's a symbol, which is a person crossing or some legs? So looking for visual cues to indicate that that's a crossing. There could be some fencing to prevent you from walking across a speed hump or a no pedestrian access sign. A speed hump also lacks the zebra crossing stripes and instead features uneven white markings that resemble piano keys on either side. 
how you cross the road is equally important, Mr. Williams says. If there isn't a crossing nearby and you are crossing the street without using an intersection, uh, it's very important that pedestrians take the shortest and most direct route to get across to the other side of the road, which is usually straight across and not at an angle. Additionally, what people might not be aware of is that it is against the law if you are crossing the road to put yourself into the path of a moving vehicle because, of course, that could cause a hazard and result in an incident. It's an offence to walk without reasonable consideration of other road users. You may be surprised that walking on the street can attract a fine, Mr. Williams says. In most cases, it's certainly illegal for pedestrians to walk on the road if there is a pavement or nature strip nearby. However, if there isn't a pavement or a nature strip to walk on, pedestrians are allowed to walk on the road. However, RACV certainly recommends that uh, you walk facing the traffic. It's safer to walk towards oncoming traffic rather than have the cars driving up behind you. Pedestrians do have right of way in some cases. Drivers must give way to pedestrians when turning off the street into a driveway and at crossings, for example. While pedestrian laws are basically similar across the states and territories, the penalties vary according to where you live. For instance, in Victoria, the fines can be significant. Mr. William warns. For pedestrian fines, penalties start at $96 for the offence of failing to obey traffic lights or crossing the road within 20 metres of a pedestrian crossing. A uh, pedestrian could also be penalised $96 for walking on the road and not using the pavement. Failing to obey a traffic direction by a police officer is a $385 penalty. Of course, not all instances of poor pedestrian behaviour result in fines. Personal safety is ultimately our responsibility and sometimes it simply comes down to practicing good etiquette. For example, keeping to the left on the footpath like you would on the road is always something that helps with the flow of travellers on footpaths. And also try not to be too distracted by mobile phones or devices while you're on footpath. Nowadays, more than ever, people are crossing the road while using their devices showing complete disregard for traffic. Harold Scrubby says smartphone addiction has bred a population of pedestrian zombies. Pedestrian zombies are well known right around the world and they unfortunately are responsible for causing a lot of road trauma. The advent of the mobile phone has meant that tens of thousands of pedestrians are crossing roads completely distracted by their phones. Either they're looking at them or they're listening to them and they're paying no attention to the impending danger. In some jurisdictions, there is a fine for crossing the road while distracted. However, the laws surrounding this issue are unclear. The Pedestrian Council of Australia advocates for the implementation of a national law that specifically makes it an offence to cross the road while distracted. If you're using any handheld device, which a police officer could say was distracting you while you're crossing the road, We'd like to see a $200 penalty for that. Number one, it would hopefully change the behaviour and reduce trauma. And of course, it would help the people who are really the main offenders. But at the moment, there are laws when you're crossing the road, but very rarely enforced. For pedestrian road rules in your state or territory, visit the National Transport Commission website. Thanks for listening to Australia Explained. This episode was written and produced by Melissa Campanoni and hosted by Afnan Malik. Australia Explain managing editor is Rosa Garmian. This was an SBS audio podcast. For more Australia Explained stories, visit sbs.com.au/australiaexplained.